The challenge with finding vulnerabilities in open source, it's actually the fact that most of open source is opaque. And uh, what most uh, tools do today is they discover the first or second level uh, set of dependencies and transitive dependencies. What we do is we actually go scan the open source code itself, identify all its risks. So we also find what we call predictive vulnerabilities. So not just known vulnerabilities, but also can predict uh, weaknesses and other vulnerabilities in the code. Hi, this is your host, Abdul Bhartia, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Seattle. And today we have with us once again, Nick Mistry, SVP and CISO at Lineage. Nick, it's good to have you on the show again. Thank you, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's my pleasure to host you here again. Let's quickly talk about uh, uh, Lineage. We have, of course, hosted you folks earlier, so our audience, they do know about it. But just quickly remind them what Lineage is all about. No, certainly. So Lineage is like the lineage of your software. So the first thing we do is we discover the entire supply chain of your software. We do this by crawling open source, similar to how Google crawls the web, and we crawl all open source, we fingerprint it, and then identify risk across multiple dimensions in itself. How different is when it comes to finding vulnerabilities in open source versus proprietary? The challenge with finding vulnerabilities in open source, it's actually the fact that most of open source is opaque. And uh, what most uh, tools do today is they discover the first or second level uh, set of dependencies and transitive dependencies. What we do is we actually go scan the open source code itself, identify all its risks. So we also find what we call predictive vulnerabilities. So not just known vulnerabilities, but also can predict uh, weaknesses and other vulnerabilities in the code. There are a lot of things, you know, we talk about S-bombs, you know, the whole software supply chain. And when you're, you know, talking about you know, scanning the code, you know, the whole image, are these complementary practices or totally different from each other? Oh no, they're absolutely complementary. However, what we're finding is to have a complete and accurate software bill of materials is critical, right? So identifying all the dependencies and transitive dependencies is the first step. More importantly is what do you do once you have the software bill of materials? And this is really what is our focus is, yes, generating a software bill of materials is great, but how do you operationalize it? How do you actually use it to understand risks and improve your software or a software from a third party that you're using? When we say these things are complementary, do you feel that when we look at all these practices, tools, the vendor sprawl, that they have covered the whole space or you feel there are still a lot of gaps there despite you know all these practices, technologies available? No, absolutely. We, we do believe there are still certain gaps uh, in the industry. Primarily, it's identifying uh, going beyond vulnerabilities themselves. What are other risks in the software supply chain? We also focus on identifying what we call risk of tamper. Uh, so can we identify a compromise as it's happening within the code or also look at uh, potential risks of tamper in the software supply chain itself? Uh, the other area that we, still, we believe is a gap is what do you do with this information? How do you remediate and remediate effectively to reduce your risk exposure uh, to what we find in the software supply chain or in the software build materials. We talked about the problem area. Uh, of course, we touched upon lineage, what it does. Sure. But in this whole security space, where where does lineage enter the picture? What are the areas that you help? Or you're like, you know what, since security is a very complicated, but at the same time, you know, uh, you have to have a holistic view, right? So, so talk about the role that lineage is playing in this space. At lineage, we're looking at the space uh, holistically and comprehensively. So whether you are building software, whether you're selling software, or you're a consumer of software, our solution is designed to support uh, all of those needs to be able to re identify risks and remediate the risks of your software, and more importantly, manage it. Uh, you know, software is dynamic, threats are dynamic. Uh, so the, the platform we've built is designed for not only collaboration, but equally important, how do you stay on top of uh, emerging risks and threats and, and then uh, remediating those. Security is not what it used to be that you know developers don't want to talk to security teams because they'll slip. Now I feel, and I may be wrong, I like to say that I see security as an enabler. When you put those guardrails around, you know, the gates around that, so de developer know that this is their safe place. They can, they can play, they can innovate without worrying about breaking things. What is your approach? So we are perfectly aligned in that approach. In fact, at Lineage, uh, we have what's called an open source manager. The intent of the open source manager 
is to allow developers the freedom to find and use the libraries and tools that they need to do, but applying policies that are fine-grained policies based on risk. So it's not simply a, a deny list or an allow list. Those we know are, are just, you know, they're too blunt, right, they're of an instrument to use. And so what we uh, derive is a risk-based set of policy. So as long as what you're bringing in uh, as a third-party component, open source component, meets those thresholds, you can use it. Now let's say something doesn't meet, meet those thresholds, then we'll enable further analysis so you can approve and accept those risks and then bring those things in. But this is a way to help drive greater efficiency and allow greater freedom, but still adding the protections uh, that your organization will need uh, in terms of what you're using as third-party components at open source. And then the other part to it is, let's say there are components that are critical, but also have critical risks in it. We've developed what we call Lineage AI that understands the full stack software bill of materials and will guide the developer through fixing these in what we call smart plan ways. So most tools today will give you, okay, your, this component has a vulnerability at version one, patch it to the latest vulnerability, uh, patch it to the latest version, version 10. Well, oftentimes you put in version 10 and it'll break your software or it'll introduce two new vulnerabilities. So what we do is a comprehensive analysis of all the components, give you the upgrade path that won't break your software but reduce the most risk and guide you through the actual remediation itself. We're finding many companies that have implemented our tool are achieving about a 40% efficiency gain because they're breaking the cycle of patching, retesting, patching, retesting. And can you also talk about the role of culture versus you know just having tools within companies so that these organizations, you know, they have a better security posture. No, absolutely. I think you know the role of culture is incredibly important. And what we're finding is 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 really not just focusing on the, the security side, not just focusing on the dev side, but how do we bring both disciplines together so they can be effective and streamlining the process uh, as a result. And that's exactly what we've seen, is bringing these two uh, capabilities together where each side has their re needs and requirements are being met and then driving efficiency through that. It does foster a much more collaborative environment because now you know, application security is not somebody who's, who's slowing down developers and developers are actively involved in choosing and managing their risk posture within the, the thresholds and guidelines that we're able to support. Earlier you did mention AI, you know, yes. um, from security point of view, let's look at it from both perspective, leveraging LLMs and Gen AI for security, at the same time securing some of those workload which are leveraging them. Those are uh, obviously, you know, uh, both points that the entire industry, including ourselves, are constantly, you know, analyzing and understanding how to deploy it uh, for, for use. So from an LLM perspective, uh, and also the Gen I perspective, you know, those are great for helping us uh, work with, the, instruct developers on how to remediate most effectively, right? Because they could do they could do the analysis very quickly, understands the language that you're using, and you can walk a developer through it. So those are invaluable to us. The other part that LLM is and is important for us is it provides a natural language interface. So now you can actually interface with our tool ask questions in normal English and get the responses you need, which is incredibly powerful. Now it enables you to access the rich information that we have. Now, you mentioned on the flip side, right? So what are the risks and how do we uh, identify and manage those risks? So at, at the initial levels, what we're able to do is there, there, there's the whole concept of the AI bomb or AI S-bombs. And we are working with a couple of our uh, early customers with regard to developing this AI bomb with the same uh, intentions of identifying risks. So just like any other software, AI software has uh, you know predominantly made up of open source, open source components and similar risks, so identifying those risks. The other risk is also of data and data lineage and being able to attest to the integrity of the data in AI that's being used, a much harder problem, something that I can't say you know we've solved, not at all, but it is something we're actively working towards and identifying those risks. What kind of things we can expect from Lineage? Uh, we, of course, you cannot share too much, right. but just give us a glimpse. Oh, absolutely. So uh, we're getting ready to announce a new series of products that are uh, primarily focused on 
identifying risks that we do today, but then remediating those risks that actually have no fix available. So we will actually bring, bring in the code, rewrite it, and contribute it back to our customers. And that product is uh, something that we'll be launching here in a few weeks. And if you look at the whole overall security, you know, we talk a lot of security here also, we're talking about, are you happy with the progress that is being made? Or you're like, no, there are a lot of work need to be done. I've joined Lineage two years ago. Prior to joining Lineage, I was a practitioner. Uh, so I worked in CISO organizations and AppSec, cloud security, vulnerability management, red teaming, uh, pen testing, et cetera, uh, and compliance. I have to say that there's a lot of good work happening in the cyberspace, but there's always, always new opportunities, right? The threats and risks are always escalating. I, I think the opportunity for us as an industry is how do we bring it all together? I think there's still too many point solutions, all very good solutions, but that just sometimes makes it worse for the practitioner. Like how do they actually leverage all of these capabilities and seamlessly bring it back in? And that's not, that is something we're very focused on is how do we integrate with other tools and complement each other to make it easier for our customers to use uh, our capabilities holistically as opposed to point solutions that they have to navigate through. But more thing uh, when it comes to security is that it's not just you know uh, vendors, open source and user. The government, you know, public sector, you know, there are a lot of, you know, Biden administration, they came up with a lot of, you know, executive orders. Do you work closely with them? If yes, well, uh, how happy you are with the progress we are making there? We are part of, and I am personally part of the CISA working groups around the software bill of materials, but also software supply chain security, uh, work with NIST on the AI, AI security, and also MITRE, which is an organization that supports the federal government around the system of trust. And so I, I can tell you that these working groups are actually very uh, uh, forward-leaning. They are trying to address some large industry problems and are able to harness both this, what they call the government industry partnerships to, you know, the latest SBOM initiatives, I think is a very good starting point. Um, the AI frameworks of risk that they're coming out with is also something that was done based on these working groups and I think are really helping further uh, the security of, of, of these dis different dis domains. Just the way when we look at a lot of technologies, some technologies are very easy to be dealt with, you know, teams, internal teams, you can go to a vendor also. But then we look at a lot of technologies where you're tempted to do it yourself. Or if you go with vendor, you get very opinionated solution. Uh, when it comes to open source, how you can get the balance of both, you get the full experience of open source without having to go with a vendor where you get open solution or hiring a whole team, which will be a big cost center. No, and that's exactly what we're focused on with our open source manager, which allows organizations to define the parameters they need to define and manage risk in that way, but also based on what they've defined, we put in guardrails at different stages. So, you know, at time of source, you may have a different set of guardrails versus time of build versus time of deploy, and we take all of those into account. Similarly, we also, working through with many of our customers, realize that they have to have policies from legal, from AppSec, from compliance, and they all have to seamlessly work together without causing friction. So we're enabling all of those rules and identifying those as throughout the SDLC so we don't cause friction points. The last thing we want is you're getting ready to deploy and some compliance mandate comes in and says, no, you can't deploy at this point. So the part of what we're doing is bringing all that information together. It's also, we've, we provide a starting framework and we provide analysis to inform those decisions. So a good example is how do you, de how do you determine if a policy is going to be effective? So what we enable is you can write the policy as a natural language statement with it using our natural language AI. It'll then perform that analysis and show you the results. Before you implement it as a policy, it kind of creates a sandbox to understand if you implement policy X, what exactly will you see and what could be the ramifications of it. So it allows you to fine tune these policies even before you make it a, a formal policy in the term. How does Lineage maintain the balance between open source and commercial offering? You know, for us, software is software, right? And so uh, I think open source is a tremendous uh, place for innovation, and I think it will continue to be uh, that place for innovation. Uh, the side that we're addressing is oftentimes, you know, I think there was a statistics that said only about 11% of open source is actively maintained. 
So how do we manage the risks associated with all open source? And that's what we're really focused on. Uh, proprietary solutions, uh, we can also support. Uh, the way we support that is through software build materials and identifying risks and help manage those. Uh, but at the end of the day, we know it's it's a combination of, of both open source and proprietary solutions. Nick, thank you so much for taking time out today. And, and I, I love this great discussion around, you know, securing, you know, uh, the whole, you know, supply software supply chain. Thanks for the great insights. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. I'd love to come back. Thank you.